getting the things out of the vertical position, for example. Um, but this can be difficult in the case in which the water hasn't receded yet. And it depends what kind of flood we're talking about. Because, for example, in, um, in Florida, at the time when uh, Katrina hit in Louisiana, in particular, in Florida they had big problems with the hurricane uh, themselves in the museums because of the fact of the aerosol, which not only contained water, but also contained um, uh, sea salt as well. One of the problems in, the, in some of the museums in Florida were the acrylic paintings, 1950s, 1940s paintings. In that case, it wasn't probably sufficient to get them flat, okay? Because the air salt was depositing in the form of a spray on the surface and therefore was creating problems besides. I mean, you have to know exactly in your collection or in your museum or in wherever you are, what the objects are, what they're made of, and their state of conservation. Having a complete survey of everything on hand. And then, when you have to act in the face of an emergency, acting according to knowing what the objects are. Okay? I made the example of the acrylics in that case because what I was saying about a panel painting in that case maybe wouldn't be valid. Hmm? So, in the case, for example, of water damage, if the objects, you have to get them off the wall, it's always a good idea to have a space available beforehand in the site in which those objects can be placed. Then, when you put the, get them out of their original place, for example, in the Uffizi after the bomb, we didn't have so much the problem about putting them flat. We had the problem of, of storing them vertical in a protected area. Therefore, we had an area in the middle of the other <coughs> normal rooms in which we had support systems in which the objects could be placed one next to the other without stacking them one on top of the other. So they example. go flat, and what are we packing them in when they're flat? You How don't pack them in anything. No protective. No protective anything. The first thing is usually to get them flat out of the water and keep them in a humi humid environment. In a, so a high Usually. humidity. Usually. Usually. So don't yeah. quickly remove right. them necessarily from the from premises. The place. And then, at that point, to get them into the laboratory, if you have to, or you want, or you need to, usually we do, we proceed to surface protect the objects with a facing, using Japanese paper and the appropriate type of adhesive. So therefore, the materials have to be on hand in the site. And this is something that the single people have to worry about. And I know it's a little bit difficult to talk about private owners, but in a museum situation, they have to have the areas, the personnel who can guide as well, trained to do that so that even if you have people coming in, volunteers or whatever, they can tell the volunteers what to do. If you have to pack it, obviously if you get something in which there's a danger of the surface material being lost, you can't pack it up eh? in, with anything in contact with the surface until you've temporarily protected the surface, perhaps, with a facing material. So we're, we're basically Which has to be done with a professionals. Yeah. Okay. We're stabilizing until we can bring a professional. Exactly.